What up, viewers? What up, what up? Today is Friday, August 23rd, and I have just a quick recap of video game news for you this week. Um, lots of stuff happened. Gamescom's coming out, yeah. So uh, let's jump right in. So, like I said, Gamescom happened this week, or is probably currently happening. Um, yeah, Gamescom, the world's largest uh, video game conference, is happening in Cologne, Germany. And uh, I am not there. I am here to talk to you about video game news. Um, no, but a lot of information coming around, coming out uh, around Gamescom. Pretty much everything I'm talking about is is Gamescom related, but I do have some tidbits that aren't games Gamescom related. So it all started off with uh, Jeff Keighley doing opening night for Gamescom. He had like two hours of video game premieres and news. Um, he talked about Witcher 3 coming to the Switch. He talked about every other game coming under the sun. He talked to some big publishers, some smaller publishers. Um, and all that was was very cool. Um, and then Google Stadia is everywhere. Every everything that Google Stadia can be at, they will probably be at until they launch, and if not later. Um, so Google Stadia had their big presentation, and this one was just focused on video games. Um, they talked about games like uh, Doom Eternal. They talked about uh, uh, Mortal Kombat coming to the platform. Lots of lots of uh, lots of news coming and games coming to the Stadia platform. And then uh, last but certainly not least, the Nintendo. I would have figured it would have been called the in the past they've been called Nindy Showcases, um, but this one was called Nintendo Indie World, which I thought was just weird. Um, but that had a bunch of games on it. The Risk of Rain Two. Um, they had Ori in the Blind Forest, um, and then. Just trailers were popping up left and right, all of them coming out of Gamescom um, from the, the latest Darksiders game. Uh, Darksiders Genesis looks very, like, Diablo-like. Um, and then there was the... Oh, God, there was just so much. The, the Nindy Showcase showed off Torchlight 2 coming to uh, the Nintendo Switch. Another Diablo-like that I, I know, I, I like those games, so that's why those are the ones that kind of bubble up to the top. Um... As well as, oh god, there was the Dark Crystal game, which I'm very interested in. There was gameplay for uh, Link's Awakening and Bloodlines 2. Uh, just There was just so much happening this week. There was Death Stranding. There was a character trailer as well as gameplay, um, which you can pee in, I guess. You can pee in the game. That's good gameplay right there. But there was just a ton of stuff coming out of Gamescom. Um, everything was happening this week. This is the first time I've, I don't know if I haven't been paying attention in the past, but it just seems like so much happened this week, just trying to run through everything. Um, I'm just super surprised by it. Um, not that Gamescom has been small in the past, although I did hear about the f almost 400k people that were at Gamescom, and that's just a scary amount of people. Um, but, uh, you know, it kind of it kind of made me want to be there because there was just so much happening. Um, like every five minutes I was looking at and there's a new trailer for this game or more gameplay for that game um, yeah so just so much was happening this week um, and I can't I can't properly give each thing enough time but hopefully I can recap and give you a couple links to some videos that will kind of break down what what was happening at Gamescom um, yeah it, it it looked cool uh, makes me want to go uh, and maybe maybe I'll I'll work up the guts in order to uh, go wade through 400,000 people in order to to check out the awesome stuff that's happening at Gamescom. But a lot of great stuff was happening, and and I'm just I, I'm just so excited to see everything that was coming out of it. So um, there was definitely a game for everybody, uh, especially some new ones, some of the smaller developers. Uh, everyone got airtime. It was awesome. Uh, but some things happened uh, outside of Gamescom. Uh, and so I want to move on from that and talk about a few other things. Um, Sony bought Insomniac. Uh, I didn't know that Insomniac wasn't already a studio of Sony, um, but I, I guess I always like kind of knew that like they were their own thing. Um, but they like every game they've had has been like Sony exclusive. So I just it's, so it went from from long exclusivity to fully uh in a committed relationship it's kind of funny um but yeah i mean especially after the the hit success of the marvel spider-man game i'm just uh yeah super excited for them uh they're that's that's awesome uh 
you know, someone had to snatch him up, and they did a great job with Spider-Man. So hopefully they can continue to make uh, good game, great games under under the purview of Sony in the future. Uh, speaking of acquisitions as well, THQ Nordic bought Gunfire Games. Uh, Gunfire is the people behind uh, the latest Darksiders game, Darksiders 3. As not, not Genesis. I don't think Darksiders is, or I don't think Gunfire is the studio behind Darksiders Genesis. Um, but Darksiders 3 was done by them, as well as Remnant from the Ashes, which is a, a recent release that I'm going to talk about in a few seconds. But um, yeah, THQ bought up that studio, which was interesting because Remnant from the Ashes just launched. They launched on the 20th, which was Tuesday. Um, and the announcement so the deal had probably been happening prior to the game launching but they finally came pu came out public publicly with it um so that's super cool speaking of remnant from the ashes i managed to pick it up but uh, i haven't played it yet but it got a 78 metacritic which you know puts it around the area where you know buy it if you have friends but you know it doesn't mean that it's a, a commercial or it's not critically acclaimed and it's not going to pull in everybody from every genre but the game looked looked super cool i've been following it for a little bit it was probably if there was if i was going to buy a game in august i think this was the one um not that there are very many that came out this month um but um yeah it it was cooperative shooter but it has like its own art style i talked about a tra uh, trailer and gameplay last week very cool art style uh, the gunplay looked kind of cool. It has kind of a Soulsian vibe where you have to manage a stamina bar while you're jumping around or rolling around. Um, and then you're just shooting. You you fight off a wave of minions, and then you go into a boss fight, and you have to learn the boss's mechanics. Um, game looks super fun. Uh, I read one review that, that um, you know, solo play might be hard, which is why I, I, bought, it. I bought into it because I had a couple other friends who bought into it. So I'm um, looking forward to playing with a group of friends. I don't know how you, some of the boss fights seem really hard. I don't know how you would do them solo. Um, and then, yeah, the, the gunplay looked very fun. All of it looked very cool. 78 Metacritic, Remnant from the Ashes. Um, launching next week is Control, which is the other game that would have been on my list to, to buy um, in August. Uh, Control is the latest game from Remedy, the people behind Alan Wake, and quantum break uh which was an xbox exclusive um it they had their launch trailer this week um the trailer kind of shows that she's like i feel like they're going for for somewhat like a an 11 from from uh stranger things vibe she was exp it sounds like either she worked for or was experimented on by a secret government agency and now she's rising up to like attack them um because it showed like a a pretty bleak uh empty government um facility and uh yeah it i i still don't quite know what it is but it, it showed a little bit of gameplay of like her flying around and her guns shifting around and shooting people um big uh, colossal um kind of uh eldritch horror -y monsters that she was fighting so i yeah i, I think there is a lot of there's definitely a, a minor influence from Stranger Things to this, um, just based on like the girl with powers. Although she is a full, a full, full, full woman, um, but yeah. Control launches next week. Uh, I, I I bet the game will will do well. I think Remedy does, makes really good games, so uh, look into that if you are interested. Um, Last for like the trailers and other things outside of Gamescom that I saw was I saw a few reviews of the new Switch and it apparently does get like 50% more um, battery life. Uh, everyone was, you know, I saw one or two videos of, of people testing out the new Switch model and it getting four and a half hours worth of battery life as opposed to the typical three you get with the current generation. It also talks through, um, how to recognize the box the red box versus like the the is the way that it stands out there are um even upc descriptions on like they start with different letters uh the upc starts with different letters depending on which model it is so all of that was a good way to identify the new switch to back up its claims and to uh get it if you want a new switch and it makes me consider um it, it, do i want to trade in my new switch 
or I, my switch for a for a new one. And uh, there's a lot of trade in values at GameStop. I talked about those last last week or two weeks ago. Um, so you're pretty much you can trade in your current switch for like 200 and get one get a new one for three. So you're paying an upcharge of 100 dollars to get more battery life. Um, and if that's something you're interested in, then um, go ahead and do that. Moving right along, big deals happening this week. Uh, Xbox One Game Pass is only two dollars for the first two months, and considering I'm bu- I'm thinking of buying an Xbox for Gears of uh, Gears Five, um, it could be super interesting. I'm uh, I'm definitely playing with the idea of of buying uh, an Xbox One. So Game Pass being only two dollars is definitely a big incentive to uh, to buy into that ecosystem. And there was a ton of Game Pass games added uh, at Gamescom. Uh, just to bring it back to the big thing that happened this week um so game pass i i in my email i call it the uh the greatest deal in gaming because it just it it has day and date games would launch on the platform as well as um as well as like a whole slew of history and indie titles and and other not first party titles that that i'd be interested in um Last but certainly not least, Supergiant, the company behind Pyre and Bastion and, oh god, what, Trans... God, I forget what, forget what their second, their middle game was. Transistor. Transistor. Uh, yeah, so the company behind, they make really cool, really uh, pretty usually narrative-driven games, but each each game is always a little bit different, um, and Pyre was more of like a sports title. Anyway, the Supergiant is the company behind those games, and they make very pretty games, and they're having a sale on GOG this week, um, so if you want a PC version of all of those games, you can get them all like 80% off, I think I saw, um, this week. Well, that's it. That was a quick news recap. Like I said, I can't get through everything that happened at Gamescom. If you feel like I missed anything, put it down in the comment sections below. Um, Hope you enjoyed this. If you're watching this live on my Twitch channel on Friday, then I really appreciate you stopping by. A like, a follow, and a sub goes a long way. Um, If you're watching this when I upload this to YouTube, typically on Saturdays, um, then a a thumbs up goes a long way so that I can get... um, that other people can get recommended as content and as well as to subscribe if you want to see all, uh, all of these i put them together every week so uh, if you want to see all this content on a weekly basis go ahead and subscribe on youtube um hope you enjoyed this hope you have a super weekend hope you have a super day hope you have a super day cool thanks bye